A town hall discussion, a large trade show, and industry awards for excellence in peanut-related fields were handed out during the 36th Georgia Peanut Farm Show recently. Rick Trepto takes us to the event in Albany, Georgia. The Albany Civic Center was at capacity with almost any piece of equipment or service a peanut farmer needs. The Georgia Peanut Commission and the University of Georgia coordinates the show. We just give farmers the opportunity to come at one day to visit. With, we have over 85 exhibitors that can see the latest technology, the different changes from year to year for companies have. We also have seed seminars, we have production seminars. You can pick up something different every year. Mark Mathis of the Amatis Company showed me this 2110 tractor-driven peanut combine. This year we're, we're actually officially introducing our offload conveyance system, uh, which enables you to, to, while you're harvesting peanuts, to unload as you, as you pick. So this will actually increase your capacity up to around uh, 20%. Non-stop harvesting using great technology. Mathis agreed there was a drought in 2011, but at the end, good crops and good prices were made. The year was a good year last year. We sold out everything we had last year. Uh, the crop was good. Uh, 2012 is, is looking even better. It looks like acreage is going to be increasing. And uh, we were pretty much sold out of our production for, for this coming year. The prices of cotton and corn also compete with peanuts. Well, we decided not to grow any peanuts in 11, uh, with the price of cotton being up. and. Uh, we decided we'd just drop out of peanuts, increase our rotation another year, and uh, concentrate on the cotton and corn. Hopefully, it increase our peanut yields uh, in 2012. Anyway, having a year longer rotation, so we're looking looking at that end of it anyway. The show had this town hall discussion. The main topic was the failure of the 2011 peanut referendum to increase by a buck. Growers pay that per ton for promotion and research. So the question is, what do we do? Because we've got this research crisis staring us in the face. We're losing researchers. The industry knows state and federal budgets can't be counted on anymore. The thing that I could not stand to think is for 10 years down the road, the farmers come back and say, why didn't you tell me there was a problem? Kaler's and the commission's quick reaction to what they heard from their farmers. Could it be time to try the assessment increase again? The response in the meeting was, you know, we've got to do this and and we can afford to. We're making more money, we're, we're having better yields, and we can put a little more and invest in that. The vote could happen with a petition to the commission. And the award winners, the Distinguished Service Award went to Joan Sutton Underwood, retired from the Georgia Peanut Commission. Also, Frank Bodiford, retired from the Georgia Food Safety Inspection Service. The Research and Education Award went to Dr. Mark Manry, the inventor of the peanut paste to help combat hunger around the world. The media award went to Georgia Public Radio's Josephine Bennett. A special award went to the Georgia Peanut Festival in Sylvester. The Georgia Young Peanut Farmer Award went to Brad Thompson of Seminole County. There were two door prizes. The winner of the KMC use of a peanut combine is Preston Odom of Arlington. The winner of the KMC $1,500 cash prize went to Burton Heatwell of Sylvania. The largest monetary award was from Lanier Carson, the CEO of the Kelly Manufacturing Company who presented $50,000, $1,000 for each of the commission's years working for the farmers. It will go to help pay for the commission's new building in Tifton. I'm Rick Treptill for the Georgia Farm Monitor.